Pit Cemetery was based on the 1983 novel written by Stephen King. It was actually based on some of his family's personal experiences as he had taken a temporary one-year job uh, working at the University of Maine at Ontario. The family had rented a home near a busy street. There actually was a cemetery in a field nearby which was built by children who had lost their pets. Stephen King's daughter at one point eventually did bury her cat in that cemetery. The family also did have a close call when his infant son at the time ran towards the road. There was quite a bit of, a, of personal information tucked into the novel. Feeling that he had gone maybe just a bit too far, Stephen King set the novel aside and was reluctant to have it published. The only reason the novel probably did see the light of day or was because Doubleday, which was Stephen King's uh, publishing house at the time, kept insisting on receiving a final novel due on his contract. Reluctantly, Stephen King did turn the book over and was published. The film went into production in the fall of 1988. The film was distributed by Paramount Pictures, and the film was released in the summer of 1989. The movie itself was filmed in Maine. Uh, there is a familiar cemetery scene in which Stephen King does a cameo. He plays a minister presiding over the funeral of Missy Dandridge. This location was actually at Mount Pleasant Cemetery in Bangor, Maine. So in the film, we do have Dale Midcliffe playing the part of Lewis Creed, the distraught father who gradually does go insane as he begins losing family members and tries to find a way to keep his family together. We also have Denise Crosby in the role of Rachel Creed. She is the granddaughter of legendary singer-actor Bing Crosby. She also may be known for her roles on Star Trek The Next Generation. We also have Miko Hughes in the role of Gage Creed. Uh, he was a very popular child actor. He's most known for Pet Cemetery. He also had a small role in Kindergarten Cop, acting alongside Arnold Schwarzenegger. He also did have a smaller role in in the Poltergeist sequel. He is featured in the scene in which a crazed preacher has holed everyone up underground and has attempted to murder the flock. Miko also did play the son of Heather Langenkamp in Wes Craven's Final Nightmare. We also have Blaze Birdall playing the role of Ellie Creed. She's mostly known nowadays for voiceover work. In March of 2010, it was announced that there was a proposed remake in the works. The screenplay is being written by Matt Greenberg, the same fellow who worked on the adaptation to 1408. Later that year, uh, September, Guillermo del Toro did express some interest in wanting to direct the film as well as the remake for it. Regrettably, his schedule is too busy, so there is no definite time frame of when we can actually expect these films. The film Pet Cemetery is directed by Mary Lambert. The screenplay is, of course, written by Stephen King, and it does feature a small family. They move out to the country somewhat of a, a dream home or, or a desired wish. Lewis Creed has taken the job of a doctor at the University of Maine. Unfortunately, things gradually do go bad for the family. Jeb Crandall, who is played by Fred Gwaine, who may best be known as his role, uh, Herman Munster, plays the Creed's next door neighbor. He acts as somewhat of a father figure to Lewis, eventually making the mistake of taking him up to the pet cemetery to bury daughter Ellen's cat church as he feels it's she is not ready to experience loss in her life. This is pretty much the family's undoing. The whole basic idea of the road to hell is paved with kind intentions, literally in this case. The cat does come back. It does stench extremely foul and it's not at all the cat the creeds do remember. Eventually while picnicking, the family experiences their first true loss as Gage rushes out to the road and is hit by an 18-wheeler. The film does feature a lot of photos photographs and flashback sequences which do add to the shock as well as the great emotional loss of losing a child. That is a great feature of the film is that it does use a lot of flashbacks, backstories to further build character development. It is an ongoing process which never does end so it does create for very strong characters. They are multi-dimensional. We don't have any flat cardboard characters which is wonderful. It's definitely a feature which should be used more in modern films rather than just waiting for characters to, to die. It's nice 
nice to have a character that, that you can empathize with. Lewis later does make the decision to take his infant son up to the pet cemetery to try to resurrect him. Unfortunately, the child does come back as something much darker, much more evil. He's no longer the giggling toddler, but rather a very menacing figure. His first stop is coming by the Creed home. He goes through Lewis's bags and picks out a scalpel. He basically sets up shop across the street. He does murder Judd Crandall. This is actually the most shocking and best death in the entire film, in my opinion. He cuts the Achilles heel, slashes him across the mouth, and basically gnaws his throat. In the book, it is much more obvious that Gage is more of a, a dark or a, a demonic, possessed or demon type creature. This is further exemplified by the fact when Gage does return to Judd's house, he torments or taunts him with information or insinuating that Judd's wife had been unfaithful to him. Uh, this is obviously something that no four-year-old would know as well as being able to, to verbalize such thoughts. This is also further exemplified in the fact that Gage calls his home, which how many four-year-olds actually know the phone number to their own landline? Throughout the film, we also do have character Victor Pascal, who was near Lewis Creed at the time of his death. He was a jogger who had been hit and was basically near death. In show appreciation for Lewis trying to save his life, Victor has taken it upon himself to try to save his family. Ironically, they are very similar in the fact that in the film, Lewis Creed says to Pascal, you are as good as dead when they brought you in. This is pretty much could be tied back to the Creeds as well as Lewis Creed was introduced to the pet cemetery. He awakened something very dark and very evil. Obviously, Victor's spirit or ghost is very much aware of this and trying to save him. Rather, he's trying to save Lewis Creed from himself, which is impossible because it is implied that this has already been predestined. The cemetery already having gotten a taste of new flesh once more and continues to bring about the downfall of the family. Uh, this is further shown as Rachel Creed does try to make her way home to see her husband. She's basically visited by the ghost of Pascal. She suspects something is wrong. She's rushing out to find out what is going on. The first thing that goes wrong is she misses her connecting flight. She decides to drive. Uh, then she has a blowout. She basically hitches a ride. Everything possible gets in her way to prevent her from, from going home and meeting her husband. When she finally does get home, she does hear her infant son giggling, walks across the street, and becomes yet another victim. The following morning, the child calls his father, Louis, who is obviously upset, goes across with the intentions of putting the child down. He does take a syringe filled with morphine. He does tussle with the child a bit and does put him back to sleep. Also seeing what has happened to his wife as the child did murder the wife, he's basically just completely rattled by now. Decides to take her to the cemetery, determined that it will work out this time because she hasn't been dead as long so things shouldn't turn out the way they did as they did in the past. This is the last time that Pascal does try to warn Louis but obviously he's no longer permitted to, to go any further. Louis does stay up playing cards waiting for his wife to return home at midnight. Uh, she walks in, they embrace, and we see a knife coming up and screen fades to black. So obviously we do see that this was obviously waiting for a, a fresher body was not the case. The ground was just evil. It, it feeds off of things. It is a very shocking film. I think it's held up very well by today's standards. Technically it is an 80s film. Uh, it was released in 1989. However, the styles are not very 80s-like. I tend to think of it more as a 90s film. Very timeless. I think it has held up extremely well. I think it's an excellent film. It's actually one of my most absolute favorite films, but I will leave you to watch the film if you do decide to take a look, and I will talk to you later.